Boom. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. I'm so excited that you're here. So today I'm working on the skull again. I did do a little work off camera, which is, um, shall we say, seems like a little bit of magic. I added, as you can see on the top right here, I added a nice lightning bolt. And this is pretty normal, but I really kind of liked it. And I like what's going to happen when I go to wood on this. Because um, my theory is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different uh, color wood for these uh, stripes right here. So this will be alder on the outside, alder on the inside, and then um, this will be a walnut. I've got a nice dark walnut that'll be this stripe right here. So it'll really make this pop here, and then the rest of the skull will be the same color alder. However, before I do that, I really want to finish out what I want the skull to look like. Um, when we're done. So there's quite a bit of detailing I want to do uh, on the sides and on the teeth. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is uh, just get the, this a little more accurate. Um, back in here, this side, at some point I'm gonna flip it over um, and get the bottom a little more accurate because that's one of the things that I'm worried about um, with the wood version of this. Uh, so that's what we're gonna work on right now. And here we go. So one of the things that um, someone that my friend asked is, what kind of tools am I using? Uh, these are all handmade tools, most of them. Um, the wooden ones you'll see are all handmade, uh, made in, in various times, various reasons. I believe this one was turned on a lathe. Um, <laughs> it's been a long time since I made this one. It's about the mark that they make. Uh, something like this, uh, you drag it across, it's going to make a mark like that. Um, it might help you carve in and get some uh, planes in or whatnot. Um, it doesn't matter a whole lot, just depending on what kind of mark you want to make. This is one of my favorites though. Uh, the thing that's nice about it is it's got some multiple shapes. <laughs> it needs to be uh, messed with a little bit there. It's got multiple shapes. Uh, I can use both sides. It's got a sharp edge like the on this side. It's got a flatter edge on this side. So it's really 
a useful tool for laying in different uh, shapes, different lines. Uh, you can use it across an entire plane. It's kind of a nice tool. These are something that I just picked up recently. I am not super happy with them. I wish they were steel. Wish they were the real thing. They're just a plastic uh, dental tool. I actually have uh, one of these guys that I, uh, I made myself. So this will probably do a significantly better job because it's steel. It's got a little bit of flex in it because it's spring steel. Um, but not as much flex as those plastics things have. Now, some of you may be wondering uh, what this is made out of. Uh, this is an old tip that I picked up from a pottery professor I had in college. When the street sweepers come by, the uh, brushes on the bottom of the street sweeper are made of these steel springs. Um, well, this springy steel, there's quite a lot of flex in it. Um, and so when you go on your walk, you just kind of watch for them. They're always laying around the road somewhere. Um, and you just pick up, pick them up when you see them and you can shape them into anything. They're pretty, um, pretty shapeable. So I could in theory, you know, if I warm this up a little bit, shape this into a loop and then come in here and uh, grab that. I could, uh, heat it up and then cool it down fast and make it a more permanent shape. I could stick it in a handle. And then uh, if, if as long as I get it nice and firm inside the handle, I could make my own loop tool out of this stuff. Pretty uh, handy, pretty nifty. I said nifty. That means I'm old. Here's another nice tool that I like. Um, I thought I had a bigger one than this, but this gets you nice long flat planes. It's really small, so I can um, get down inside small stuff. I can make little adjustments to little planes. I can turn it around and make bigger adjustments to bigger planes. Um, I can dig down in there and uh, with this guy and dig some stuff out. Again, just homemade piece of wood. It's a stick. One tool that I didn't talk about, and that's this guy. This is just a big paddle. Uh, you saw me using it in the last video quite a bit for uh, putting the clay on the armature. It's just great, it's got enough weight, you just can sit there and whack something with it. Um, that's, it's really helpful. It's also nice to get big, big wide planes. So when you whack it, come along here and you go You get some nice big wide planes. Um, you can really move some clay around with this and you can really start to shape it with this thing. Um, it's got one sharpened edge, not sharpened, but it's a bit more pointy to get in there and then one flatter edge. Uh, it's kind of a, a useful tool all around. Um, plus, you know, when the children misbehave, I can wave this at them. If I bleed tonight, if I am sad tonight, I don't have a job to find. And if I work tonight, if I'm so tired tonight, I'll fall asleep when I'm home, when I'm Come on, way, we'll never look.
looking back to this world of and fear. There was nothing I could do. There was nothing you said that could make me realize how much lucky I was. Just out of reach of the fire. Was not aware of the time now. But when I stopped to see through that peaking for hell, peaking for hope, just need to open my eyes now to try to change them to sunshine. I dropped it. I dropped it. It's okay. That's a good place to stop tonight. It's getting kind of late. It's time to get this uh, time to get this rolling into video. Um, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. It's been so much fun tonight. Just working like crazy on this guy trying to get it worked out. Um, real quick note on this. So a lot of times as I'm looking at this, um, I'm thinking, how do I do this in wood? So uh, you'll notice here, at one point I had separated these teeth quite a bit. I brought them back together because I don't want to separate that in the wood. I want to just be able to make a line and be done with it. I'm still on the debate as to whether or not to keep, there's a hole right up in here. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of thinness right here in these areas. I'm gonna have to watch that when I'm doing it in wood. A um, few other things. Um, hopefully I won't drop it when it's in wood either. Um, trying to think of what else. It just bits and pieces here and there. How do I get the teeth in? How do I carve back in here, uh, back in here and uh, make it look okay? Um, as far as that goes, though, I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm really glad that uh, I went with um, clay first. It's taught me a lot about what the skull's actually shaped like. It's taught me a lot about um, how to make one of these in wood. I don't think it would have been a good idea at all to just go straight to wood. You see a lot of the back and forth that I'm having uh, as I take something out and put it back and then take it back out again. And, uh, just trying to get the exact proportions. It would have been really hard to do in wood if um, if I hadn't done it before, if I hadn't done a clay piece first. So practicing is always useful. Uh, and plus, I think what I'm gonna do with this, if this works out successfully, see, when I dropped it, uh, when I dropped it, his head got misshapen, all the clay got pushed over here. He's like, you got a soft skull, buddy. Um, yeah. I think what I might do is when I'm done with it, I'll keep it and then I can redo patterns on the, on the face and around. I can redo the teeth, all that kind of stuff. And if I keep this as a skull, I'll be able to um, wipe out the patterns, put in new stuff, experiment with it. I've been seeing some uh, cool Celtic designs and that kind of stuff online. Um, all right. Thank you guys for joining me. Have a good night. You guys are awesome. See you later.
Hey, it's me and Scully again. Um, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a big thumbs down. Um, but only if you like really didn't like it. Like you can't stand my face. Like I am the most annoying guy in the world. Then, then give me a thumbs down. Um, if you want to join in for more fun, subscribe and there will be more fun. Subscribe, subscribe.